I am a reptilian shapeshifter, and so are you. What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore. And on this channel, we discuss everything out of this world. So today's topic is gonna be a really fucking big deal, at least in my opinion, because it's something that I really have not heard talked about in this context. I have a lot of motherfucking information here because I done channeled, I done channeled the one, the only, Sobek. So I am not really sure if that's how you pronounce his name. His name is also just spelled S-B-K. As I progress along and getting to know him, I'm sure I'm going to learn how to pronounce it properly at a certain point. Either which way, what basically happened is that I was introduced to him because somebody sent me a video and in this video, they brought up Sobek. I had always been affiliated more with Anubis in terms of the Egyptian gods, but it just so happened that Sobek came through. He arrived to me and he said, no child, you are not a jackal, you are a crocodile. And I said, oh snap, let me jot down some notes because I was going to start channeling. So what we're going to be talking about, this might be broken up into a few videos. I don't know how this is going to go, but basically this is going to be information coming from Sobek. And this is important. This is sort of like going to be the intro to it. So first I do want to say that the reason why Sobek came to me in many forms and why we're going to be talking about reptilian shape shifters is because Sobek is an ancient Egyptian god and he was associated with crocodiles and the Nile River. like. Nile, crocodile. Mm -hmm. So when he first came through, I saw him and then I saw in the video that I just told you about that someone sent to me and I was watching the video and I saw Sobek and I was like, you know what, let me just, you know, make a little note here that I'm going to look at Sobek. So I looked at Sobek and then the next day after that is when the Lizard King presented himself to me. No, not, not the Lizard King you're fucking thinking of. Although maybe that's who he was channeling too. I mean, we never know these days. So basically what happened is that this entity presented himself to me. He was sitting in a throne and he, I'll try to find a picture of the closest thing that he looked like this way. You could kind of get a visual, but basically he came through first. He introduced himself as the lizard king. Then he shape shifted and he told me that he is actually an extension of my soul energy. And he also explained to me that this is what I need to let you all know because the reptilians at least for me when i'm channeling they will present themselves in many different forms but the original the og reptilian shapeshifter is sobek and sobek was part man part crocodile so we have that going on and then we have of course the crocodiles which are legit animal crocodiles and they're lizards and they're reptiles like all of that but basically what you need to know from sobek is that when when a reptilian presents themselves to you, they are going to present themselves in different forms. What, that's why when I first channeled him, he presented, he showed himself as a lizard king. He said he's a higher aspect of myself and he let me know that I'm crocodilian. Okay. So the reason why I said that I am a reptilian shapeshifter and so are you is because this is science. If you want to look up science, okay? Everyone has, if they are in a human vessel, everyone has the reptilian part of their brain intact. That's why when we are talking about different uh, planes of mind, there are the different constructs of mind and they each govern different things. That's branching off really a little bit more into psychology, but that's not really what we're going to talk about here. I'm just letting you know from the context that which I am speaking on behalf of Sobek who was speaking through me who conveyed messages okay so that's why 
everyone has the reptilian shapeshifter ability built into them innately because of the reptilian brain. So the reptilian brain is really just in a nutshell. It is survival of the fittest. You can look up yourself what the reptilian brain governs, but basically just in an umbrella, the reptilian brain governs survival instincts, okay? It's just the core prime evil energy that exists within everyone that is in a human vessel. Reptiles are shapeshifters. This is most notably seen in their eyes because their eyes are glow in the dark. At least crocodiles are. I don't know if other reptiles are. Okay, I know crocodiles kiss and we're talking about so back here we hear a lot of talk about the reptilian shapeshifters and there are a lot of videos i've seen them too where you can literally see someone transforming into a reptilian figure in front of your very eyes if they are speaking or you will notice that their eyes can sometimes go into slits and things like that so everyone who resides in a human vessel has that ability lying dormant in them it is just a matter of utilizing that gift and why is it a gift because us shape shifting that means that you are following the prime evil instinct that resides within you and when you are shape shifting you are adaptable you can mold yourself to any surrounding and you are able to emit energy via your eyes that is why when you see if you google crocodile eyes at night it's very similar to a cat's eye at night it glows and what's happening there is is that that is part of the shape-shifting ability. So I don't know exactly how the biology functions, all right? We don't do biology, we just do channeling. Thank you so bad. What we're doing here is when we note the shapeshifter ability in the humanoid, it will be most prevalent in the eye, okay? It'll be something to do with, uh, if you've ever heard that term, a look to kill or a death stare or their eyes were sad or their eyes were non-conveyant, that is all shapeshifter coming from reptilian instinct. I don't know if it's coming from the reptilian portion of the brain as per science would dictate, but I do know that the shapeshifter ability through the eyes is coming from the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain has a bit of a bad reputation because it's really purported that that's like the part where ego and lust and desire and like wealth and power reside in the psyche, okay? Because remember, it's survival of the fittest, so it's just looking for basic necessities to carry on on itself to carry on its lineage so to speak so it gets blamed a lot in terms of like the ego you need to shut that off when in reality you need to crank that shit way up so I'm going to get a little bit into why in this video but I am gonna break up these videos because it's just it's gonna be way too long because I've received a lot of fucking information and it all makes sense but just for the purpose of ease in conveying the messages I'm just going Going to break them up into different videos. With the reptilian brain, what was conveyed to me through Sobek is essentially that this part is survival of the fittest. So it's always going to act on pure instinct, not out of an emotion, not out of a thought, but it's going to just whoosh, in the moment, it's going to know what to do because of that primordial urge that the reptilian brain is attached to. It's the primordial urge to preserve itself and to keep the the species going. So when I say adaptable and we're talking about primordial urges, I am not speaking about coming from a place of feeling something and then acting out of that way. I'm not coming from a place of thinking something and acting out that way. I'm coming from a place, what I'm talking about here today, what Sobek wants me to let you know is that this is the primal instinct to preserve in the moment. It super seeds emotion and thought primordial prime evil instinct reptilian brain is what is more dominating over circumstances and situations when you are experiencing them in the moment 
So what's the difference? Why is this survival of the fittest mechanism more important and superseding intuition, which would be in the term of emotion and cognizance, which would be in term of thought, which are both very important. But in the moment, if you do not preserve primal instinct, if you do not preserve yourself, you ain't gonna exist in a physical vessel to see your dreams that you intuitively conjured up be fulfilled. You're not gonna be able to enjoy the things that you intellectually thought about that you wanted to manifest, right? Because if you don't obey the prime evil instinct part of the reptilian brain, your physical ass body ain't gonna be here anymore. The vessel is gonna be whoosh, done, okay? Because if you are only listening to intuition, if you are only going by thought and logic, all of that shit, that shit don't matter. That shit don't matter because the reptilian brain doesn't give a shit about anything like that. So you can fantasize and intuit all you want all day long. You could have clear cognizant thought downloads all day long, right? You could know where the fuck you're going on your journey. You could know why the fuck XYZ incident occurred previously in your journey. You can know all that. You could feel all that. But in the moment, guess what happens? Prime evil instinct. If you are operating from prime evil and there is something that is potentially threatening in front of you and you don't fucking defend yourself, guess what's gonna motherfucking happen? You might not no longer be in a physical vessel to enjoy those other things. So this prime evil instinct is beyond fear. It exists beyond that. Have you ever seen a motherfucking crocodile we're talking about crocodiles have you ever seen a crocodile be afraid oh wait I haven't okay I'm just I'm throwing it out there I have never seen a crocodile be afraid of anything why he doesn't exist in motherfucking emotions he doesn't exist in fucking thoughts okay even though emotions and thoughts are very beneficial for creating what you want to manifest in your experience or intuiting oh the inspired action of thought and emotion together we're going to set out to do what we want to do guess what that's all fine and dandy but in the moment as you're taking the inspired action if you are not listening to your prime evil instinct and let's say like anything that comes along that might try to deter you from your journey you got to snap at it okay you got to snap at it in the moment and then it's done the prime evil brain the reptilian brain operates not out of fear but it senses danger and it shape shifts it modifies itself it modifies its behavior accordingly to whatsoever the outside might be posing to it if you do not have that ability and everyone has that ability but if you're not tapped in to that ability and you don't know what the fuck you're doing you could intuit nice fluffy cows in the sky all day long you could know that you're gonna have 12 figures by the end of the year in your fucking bank account all of that shit right and I'm not I'm not knocking those okay because those are very much real I have plenty of other videos on that but what I just learned from <laughs> Lord Crocodile what happens is is that in the moment when you are in the inspired action you got the the thought to just hmm, I'm gonna take a different route home today whatever that's what you do in the moment your instinct when you're driving when you're walking when you're on your bike whatever you're doing you're you're listening to your instincts above all else right if you if you're on a bike and a car is coming like this what you're gonna do you're gonna stop you're not just gonna keep ooh, 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 I'm gonna follow my intuition and what what intuition if you run smack into something while you're trying to follow your intuition what is keeping you alive what is keeping you safe the instinct so I am going to give you an example of how the primeval instinct is always working just as a way for you to recognize it. This is just to give you like a little surface scratch of why the primeval reptilian part of the brain is so important because as I said, it exists beyond fear, it exists beyond thought, it exists beyond emotion. It responds to danger, it shapeshifts itself accordingly. It can throw and energy through its eyes and that's how you have you know the fucking reptiles with their eyes right how they fucking change and shit depending on like the lighting depending on like what they're doing in the circumstance okay that is all part of shapeshifter energy 
when you are listening to pure instinct you are your instinct right is saying it's getting darker outside what's going to happen you're going to adapt right your pupils are going to dilate and then in the instance of the crocodile their their eyes are going to start glowing so if you are in bright light what's going to happen your pupils are going to they're going to shrink because now there's a lot of light so you don't need to open the pupil to take in more light you want you shrink it so that you are getting an adequate amount of light that is part of the adaptability that is part of the shapeshifter ability that what is being conveyed to me is very easily accessible which we will get into an example of the natural instinct okay not only are you going to throw energy in your eyes because we've all probably given or been on the receiving end of like a death stare or someone like looking at us you know what i mean i think i've probably given them more than received but whatever that's another story but either which way you know what i'm talking about that expression if looks could kill that is reptilian brain shapeshifter activity because now you're you're charging yourself up and your eyes are like fucking laser beams if you want to picture the crocodile eyes at night that's what it is so just imagine that your energy charged up instinctually what it's like that okay it's ready to pounce because it's instinct it's not fear so an example of following your instinct and why instinct is always working in the moment and you don't have to be afraid of anything is this is a while ago this is a long time ago and if you know me you will know that my very 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 first apartment was it was interesting okay it was very interesting there was a lot of things going on in that apartment okay and if you you know then you know so this apartment there were some issues with the windows in that apartment they were made very cheaply and so i don't know exactly what the fuck it's called but basically the window the glass was too narrow for the opening <laughs> this sound i don't know how this sounds right it wasn't so narrow that there was like a space no but like you know the part the slidey part where you like push the window up and you pull it down whatever so the glass was thin and that part was like wider than it should have been for the glass by maybe I don't know like, like a really small amount but basically what I had to do which is what I ended up doing was keep an AC in the window to like prop it up i don't know okay it's it's a weird explanation but basically just picture windows that like the you know the top part of the window it would just it would slide down randomly even when the window was locked because the railing on the side was not the proper size okay so just imagine top part of a window it would just keep sliding down and it would slide down out of nowhere and that shit would be loud and my ass i don't need no loud ass noises out of nowhere okay i don't i no mm -mm. don't nobody need that shit okay you go fuck yourself i don't like that so that would happen a few times and then you know i would, obviously i would call to get it fixed but i mean did anything really happen i mean i just i told you i ended up placing my ac just in the window and then it kind of i don't know what it did but it held that shit up okay so there would be times when i would just be in my apartment and then you hear like boom because the fucking thing was slid down right so every time I'm like oh my god so my ass one day was motherfucking sleeping and keep in mind this is part of the reptilian brain instinct i was sleeping i didn't have a fear of the windows falling or whatever you know it would like annoy me in the moment but i wasn't afraid of it it wasn't something that you know that carried with me i didn't really have a thought about it like it was kind of like looking back now it's fucking funny actually so it, it wasn't anything really in my experience that i had like a legit fear of but i was sleeping and you could imagine if I don't like loud noises when I'm motherfucking awake, you think I'm gonna like a loud noise and I'm sleeping? No, okay? So the reptilian brain, which is primordial, which is connected to the tangible because it knows how to survive. It always has that innate survival instinct no matter what, that perception, that primordial instinct. I was sleeping and I had been asleep for a while and I was just, you know, in whatever sleep I was. All of a sudden, my eyes, like went boom like they were like wide open i don't know how but it did and now obviously i know how but my eyes were like wide open i'm like and i'm in my bed and then the claircognizance came through and was like the window's gonna fall 
I was wide awake, right? Like my eyes just blasted open. The Claire Cognizant thought said the window is gonna fall, so I'm like, I'm like this, kind of like half getting up, half getting down. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I was in a dead sleep, I tell you, okay? And then as soon as that thought came through, the window's gonna fall, whoosh, boom! And the window, the whatever the fuck, fell. And I said, oh, oh snap. snap. If that had happened and I was in a dead sleep, I, I think it would have been quite a different experience, okay? But I remember that visit. I remember, well, I remember it visibly too, or like visually, I should say. Either which way, I remember that vividly because even in that moment, and I was like into spirituality, but I'm not like where I am now, you know? But I knew, I knew, I was like, thank you, psychic senses, okay? Even though if we want to look at like, a, you know, a scientific explanation now, we can look at it, at least I look at it, as that was the reptilian part of the brain, prime evil survival instinct if that shit had happened i would have been in a dead sleep that would probably have went a different way i would have been shook like i don't know maybe something would have happened that i would have been like more paranoid about the window because i wasn't paranoid about the window it was just sort of like a mild annoyance so maybe had that happened a different way then i would have placed more focus than necessary on that whole window situation because it would have been a different story if it had woken me up out of a dead sleep with that slam rather Rather than if boom I woke up just I'm like what the fuck and then boom it happens like there was something primeval that was connected to my physical realm domain not that that was a threat okay like we're not talking about crocodiles in the fucking Nile where a threat like that but in a way it could have been seen as a threat right a threat to my peaceful sleep because something told me ding 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 alert 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 right like and then I woke up and then that happened so the part of the brain the primeval brain the reptilian portion of the brain operates like that it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to prepare for it's not going to be anything along the lines of a fear that you already have so let's say you have a fear of something it can be a mild fear it can be a big fear whatever fear means to you fear is operating from the level of lower vibe emotion versus like you know a higher vibe level of emotion would be love but fear exists in the construct of time whilst danger does not a physical threat a danger to anyone in their environment immediately is totally different than fear because you're going to always instinctually be able to respond to anything that would be a perceived threat or a perceived danger even if it's something like the window thing something that you could look at as like an inconvenience or like something that, that would annoy you right but either which way it's still picking up that is something that is going on in the immediate environment ding 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 we gotta let this motherfucker know that's the reptilian portion of the brain when I was channeling all this information because I went down me a motherfucking rabbit hole with Sobek. So anyway, I looked up something, I think like, how do crocodiles sleep? And what I meant was like, how do they sleep? Like where do they sleep? In the water? Do they sleep in a cave? Do they sleep in a swamp? Whatever. I looked up how do crocodiles sleep? And what came up was something that, I, let, let me just tell you exactly what came up because I tell you, I screamed. I screamed, I screamed, I said, <laughs> I said I was looking at my iPad right and I and I googled that shit okay I googled that shit and then I'm like oh my god I'm like this me or not so the quote that I screamed at says crocodile sleep, sleep with, with one, one eye, eye open, open and, and half, half their, their brain, brain awake, awake. Yo, I dropped the mic, I walked away, I vacated the motherfucking stage. I said, oh, if that ain't me, I don't know what the fuck is. If you want to know how I see myself, that's how I see myself, okay? I don't know how anyone else sees me. I don't give a shit. It ain't none of my fucking business. But how I see me, that quote right there, one eye open, half the brain awake, holy shit. Because that, that's what it is. But this essentially stems from the reptilian brain. One eye open, half the brain awake, always alert, even in your motherfucking sleep. And that's what literally happened with me and that story with the window. I was was in a sleep there was something that, that had that one eye open like looking at the window like oh we got we, we got to tell this motherfucker right here what's about to happen and then boom I responded accordingly I responded to the moment I opened both of my eyes I like kind of half 
sat up in my bed and then the claircognizance came through to give me the message because the reptilian part of the brain is it's not necessarily like you know you're gonna get a claircognizant thought no this is just pure instinct but then how the claircognizant thought had to come in to help the reptilian brain out that's the whole you know the humanoid experience right we have all these aspects of the fucking brain so the claircognizant came in and was like oh shit okay this is what's going on right now the the window is gonna fall and then boom that's what happened so for that one you know emotions sat that one out it was just reptilian brain and then like the the clear cognizance that came in that portion and it, it let me know what happened and what went on is that without the clear cognizance before it happened I did open my eyes I was like what the fuck and then boom it was like this is why you open your eyes okay but my response when the reptilian brain picked up that the window is gonna fall because it's sleeping with one eye open and half the brain awake it was like window gonna fall we, we got we gotta wake this motherfucker up now. And then I innately, without emotion, without thought, remember I was in a dead sleep. I don't remember if I was dreaming, I might have been. Probably if I was dreaming at that time, it would have came through in the dream, but either which way, it was like, boom, you, you gotta wake up right the fuck now. So that's what happened. It was beyond the emotions, subconscious mind, and it was beyond the claircognizance, the thoughts, the conscious mind. It was just like pure instinct in the moment this is what needs to be done now it's show time and then boom i woke myself up or it woke me up i don't know what happened okay i guess they both worked together that is how the reptilian brain operates so it's very important to keep in mind that the versatility of the reptilian brain will present itself to you in the term of instinct because instinct is always going to respond to the exact precise moment that the instinct to respond comes up because had I been in another situation and the reptilian portion of the brain would have been activated, I would have responded differently. If I'm driving and I see a stop sign or I see someone crossing the street, reptilian brain immediately, boom, it's going to alert me. Like that's what I'm doing immediately in the moment. Whereas this one was like, you're asleep, but we're going to wake you up because in the moment you need to be awake so that you're not in a dead sleep when the window fucking falls. In the moment when you're driving, I mean, I, you know everyone is different but when you're driving you're not necessarily like in that mindset of like do I have to stop now do I have to press the brake now I mean maybe when you're first driving I guess but when you first start driving but you're not it's like in the moment you know when you have to like step on the gas and you know when you have to hit the fucking brake right you know it in the moment it's not something that you can prepare for and you're not preparing for it so you're not afraid of it just like the window I wasn't preparing for that shit I wasn't afraid of it I was just like okay whereas preparation is more like thought preparation you know have you ever like rehearsed what you wanted to say to someone or some shit like that you know that would be like thought preparation different aspect okay or if your emotions you know some motherfuckers they hype themselves up like let's say they're getting married and they're hyping themselves up with the emotion oh I'm gonna feel so great that day you know what I mean that's still preparation for a feeling or preparation for a thought but the reptilian brain exists beyond time because preparation entails that there's something that isn't going on now and that is where fear exists in the emotions and that is also where fear exists in the thought you know like anxiety or looking to the future or looking in the past with like you know sorrow or whatever the fuck right all of those they exist in time constructs whereas the reptilian this is why you shape shift you are ever, ever constantly, constantly adapting, adapting to whatsoever circumstance is presented to you in the moment it is the only moment that exists when you are truly tapped in to the reptilian brain you are operating operating on pure instinct pure instinct in the moment i gotta do this in the moment i gotta do that and it can be like a shapeshifter energy because if in the moment it behooves you and it's gonna preserve you it's gonna preserve your physical vessel remember survival of the fittest if it behooves you to give a motherfucker a dirty look in the moment that's what you do if it behooves you to be very nice and lay on the charm in the moment that's what you do you can do both i'm sure you've done both but what is that essential 
essentially that is reptilian shapeshifter energy because you instinctually know how to respond to the outside and it's beyond intuition and it's beyond cognizance. Not saying that intuition doesn't help you manifest or things like that, but the difference among these three that I'm talking about, reptilian instinct and then intuition and then the cognizance is that what's happening when you have these three together, this is how you are going to operate best in your reality. So the primal instinct should, in my view, never ever be ignored. If the fucking crocodile, okay, if the crocodile is chilling in his water, his salty water or brackish, if the crocodile is chilling in the water and he just there, he minded his own business, he ain't bothering nobody, but then a motherfucking motorboat come, come through, come through the motherfucking swamp or wherever he's at, the crocodile would be like, I gotta keep my eye on that. Even if I go to sleep, I gotta keep one eye on that at least because it's like, what what's going on? Now something is being presented into my environment. What is this doing, right? So that is how the reptilian brain operates so when we in experiencing the human vessel what we're doing is essentially with intuition that is more of like a guidance system like you if you get a vibe from someone or if you get like the intuitive spark hmm i feel like taking this route home today that does help in many different ways to help you have a, a smoother 3d realm experience the cognizance with the thought if you just have a thought I'm gonna take a different way home today and then you do that right but what is keeping you safe what is keeping you preserving you to able to enjoy the fruits of everything that you want to manifest via utilizing the intuition and the cognizance you're utilizing those two aspects of mind, subconscious, conscious, but deeper than that primeval, what's keeping you in the fucking physical vessel? What's keeping you safe and secure? It's the fucking reptilian brain. And that is why the reptilian brain, he got a bad reputation, but we don't give a fuck. The reptilian brain, you got to listen to that because let's say you take a different route home that day and it feels right, like the right thing to do. That is your inspired action on the way to your goals. If you're not listening, to the prime evil instinct that you have as you're journeying along the route that you intuitively cognitively were guided to take that day what's gonna happen if a crocodile does legit jump out of the fucking bushes and you don't respond to that moment there if you're just like ooh, ooh, intuition, ooh, intuition and cognizance what's gonna fucking happen I mean unless you're the fucking crocodile whisper I don't know you know my, then maybe you might be riding on his back all, all the way home that's really what I want to talk about today in this first segment about the reptilian shape-shifting. It really essentially means that you are shape-shifting and adapting in the moment and it's beyond the illusion of time. It's beyond the illusion of fear because fear doesn't exist. Fear is a construct of thought and emotion because it can be projected into a point in the future. It can be projected from a point in the past into the future. Like someone had a bad experience doing this. Now they bring that as a fear with them into the now moment and into the future no 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 reptilian brain don't operate like that homie he ain't got time for that let me tell you he's just there like i got my one eye motherfucking open motherfucking now what it's very calm in the moment okay so yeah that's what i think i'm going to leave it off at in this video and then now we're gonna move on to the next topic so maybe i will catch you in the next one i am oculus the alien next door we will chit chat again soon